Okay, so accessibility and JavaScript, yes, they can be friends, um, contrary to popular opinion. So uh, I'm going to talk about accessibility. Um, so I guess a bit of an introduction for those who don't know me. Um, my name is Loren. Um, it's spelled a bit differently to uh, the way you've seen it, and it's pronounced Loren. Um, the reason why I don't put the apostrophe in my name is because uh, I seem to be able to expose a lot of cross-site scripting uh, vulnerabilities in a lot of websites. So I get dear la in a lot of emails, <laughs> so I stop doing that. Um, this is one of the happiest days of my life. This is uh, working at Guide Dogs Victoria for a quick prototyping project. This is a failed guide dog, <laughs> but the CEO um, has kindly uh, taken her as his daughter. Uh, fur daughter and uh, surprising fact is actually 60% around 60% of guide dogs do fail their training course unfortunately um, but that means that the, the very very best do get given to supporting those who need them and they're adorable um, so I was a thought worker for three years until very recently and now I work for a company called Work 180 uh, we are a jobs board for women but we've actually flipped the jobs board concept on its head uh, we get uh, companies to actually upload their CVs uh, so that candidates can check out uh, a lot of things that support inclusive workplaces such as um, equal pay, parental leave, all those kinds of awesome things. I hope it's okay to give a shout out to that. <laughs> cool. Um, and we are hiring, so if you're interested. So, what is accessibility? Um, so, accessibility is a powerful magic word, even muttered under your breath or written on a story card, which is used to instantaneously summon a project manager to your desk, <laughs> like immediately, to kindly remind you that no blind people use your app. Sad but true sometimes. Um, but at least your company has done user research, right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> if you're lucky. It's never true. <laughs> it's never true. Um, yes, so this is a common thing that I saw when I was at ThoughtWorks um, going to various clients. Uh, ThoughtWorks is a consultancy, going to various clients, and uh, the word accessibility was kind of a source of awkwardness, angst, and uh, people didn't really, really want to deal with it. Um, so, uh, but sometimes legislation or not wanting to be sued. Is, is a big driver com for companies to want to implement and make their products accessible. Uh, so a lot of people have asked uh, me, what is the minimum we can do <laughs> to not get sued? Um, and actually, these days the internet's actually matured to a very, very good place and it's quite easy to, to build in accessibility when you do it up front um, and even uh, after the fact. Um, I'm not here to make anyone feel guilty that they haven't done it so far. I'm here to just teach and hopefully show you how easy it is and uh, hopefully help make uh, a few people's lives a bit better. Um, so here is the usual presentation trope, a dictionary definition. Um, this is from Google. So accessibility, what is it uh, for those who don't know? Uh, I really, really like this definition because of the, particularly the last one. It is a noun. Um, which sometimes I forget, um, and the, it is the quality of being easily understood or appreciated, and who doesn't want their software to be appreciated? Um, so, accessible or inclusive design makes your app actually better for everyone, not just uh, screen reader users or keyboard only users, um, including the devs, and um, I'll show you why later. Um, oh, and please do call me out if I say the word normal or normal people. Um, it's something I used to say all the time. I try to catch myself from the, saying that now. Um, no one in the world is normal. We're all weirdos with our own shit going on, so <laughs> that's why accessibility is so important. Uh, because in some scenarios, past, present, or future, temporarily or permanently, we're all going to be edge cases. Sorry. All right, so um, Ash kindly helped me do a Twitter poll for what to talk about tonight. I only have 15-ish minutes if I, if I do want to get questions in, which I do want to hear your questions. So the winner was the basics by a smidge. Um, so I'm going to talk quickly through semantic HTML, focus management, and color and size. And this is literally the minimum you can do to get a happy, working happy path through your program or through your app or, or your website. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> so, starting off, semantic HTML. Um, so, uh, I don't know if I should ask their hands up, but um, whose website looks like kind of the one on the left? Or have you seen any website that looks like the one on the left? Um, and whose website looks like the one on the right? <laughs> That's okay. Room for improvement. Um, so, the one on the left is commonly called div soup. Um, it is like everything will look perfect and right if you do all the CSS and stuff and all the JavaScript. Um, but it's not making the most of the power of web browsers. The one on the left is using semantic HTML. So, um, or it's also known as semantic markup. It actually is indicative or it gives the meaning of what each of those components actually are. So why do we want to use semantic HTML? So semantic HTML, sorry, is, uh, back, backtracking a little bit, uh, was introduced kind of in HTML5, um, and uh, where a few more components or HTML tags were added to give more meaning to a website. Um, and that's why I say that it's so easy to code for accessibility these days, because actually before that, if anyone knows about ARIA roles, that was actually the way to convey meaning um, to things that are looking at your website um, other than site users. So why? Um, why would we use semantic components? So apart from uh, header, article, figure, footer, as in terms of indicating what part of your page are you on, there's also the more um, smaller components like buttons, links, paragraphs, headings, uh, forms, and things like that. So making sure that we do use these components when we are, uh, making sure we do use these components when they are meant to be there is actually giving you a lot of freebies. Um, so uh, for example, um, using a button will give you an interactive element that you can use a spacebar or an enter key for free. Um, if you use a div, then you have to do, Java, do extra JavaScript to make that as interactive as the, um, as the native HTML button element. Um, something that not a lot of people know about is that built into the browser is uh, an interface for, with web accessibility APIs. Um, so these are APIs that actually um, look for standard elements in your HTML and convey that information to assistive technology or, or anything else that would look for it. For example, uh, screen readers and um, other things as well. Um, SEOs, bots, things like that. So uh, it provides a good strong basis for good information architecture. So for example, when you turn off your CSS and your styles on your website, if your um, website if it's had good information architecture design, it will kind of read like a report. It'll have the heading, a table of contents, that's your navigation, and then headings and content after that for a static website. Um, and uh, less divs means a smaller file size as well, so better for slow internet. Um, and SEO ranks you higher because you're more awesome. <laughs> Uh, but actually you can crawl through and find all the important information of what your site's really about because it goes to look for um, those elements that have meaning. Um, common mistakes are using A or div instead of a button, uh, styling a div span or P to look like a heading instead of using the headings themselves. I'll show you why later. Um, using a table for layout. I don't think anybody does this anymore, but if you use a table for layout, the screen reader will say table one, so it's table row one, column one. This is blah, blah, blah. Um, and not, correcti not correctly labeling inputs with labels. This one is pretty catastrophic, uh, but it's so, so easy to um, implement and fix. Um, so does anyone think any of these would take a really long time to do? Nope. Awesome. Depends how big your code base is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so one of the things that I found uh, after learning about semantic HTML is it's so cathartic to delete divs. Because then, as a fresh developer, or even as myself, coming back to my code and trying to work out where stuff is, <laughs> it's so much easier with semantic um, HTML tags. Okay, focus management is uh, one of the big ones, and, and one of the ones that trip people up a bit more often. So, um, 
Does anyone know what focus is on a website? Uh, I'll show you in a moment. So, actually, I'll start with the I'll start with the example. I think. Oh, it's already up. Okay, so kayak. Um, and I don't mean to <laughs> call out anyone and make them feel bad. Kayak's a really nice website. Really awesome services. Um, I've used them before. Um, so let's say uh, this is an example from my accessibility superhero, Marcy Sutton. Um, she goes, I come home from work, I'm a developer, I'm sick of using a mouse, I just want to tab through stuff with a keyboard. So um, I'm going to try and tab to, let's say, Brisbane. Um, I have no idea. I'm pressing tab, no idea. Oh, what was that? Oh, they have skipped to main content. So they have a skip link, which is a common accessibility thing, but I still have no idea where I am. Oh, there we go. Oh, I have no, yeah. Not a great user experience, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, unfortunately for people who cannot use a mouse, this website would be quite difficult to use. Um, okay, so. Um, an example of a good website is uh, something like Twitter, which I'll show you a bit later. Uh, I'm going to do a bit of a demo with Twitter and a screen reader. Um, so uh, it makes websites accessible equally to mouse users and keyboard users. Um, and it's super helpful to know where you are and what you're doing um, so that you have, can have a good experience and get the thing that you want to do done really quickly. That's what you're trying to do, right? Just achieve the thing. Um, and it also stops users from accessing parts of the page that they aren't supposed to. So common mistakes. Um, so a lot of people think that the focus outline in CSS is really ugly. And it is, I agree. <laughs> um, it's like that blue fuzzy thing. Um, and it wraps around things really terribly. So a lot of uh, web developers just play and remove it. Or the designer will ask the web developers to remove it. And it's gone, and that's what's happened to Kayak. Um, the focus bar I'm talking about is like, for example, when I click on this link here, uh, that, that blue thing that comes up, this blue outline here, that's the focus um, element. Oops. Um, another mistake that commonly happens is not drawing focus to a modal. So, uh, for example, you tab or you click on a login button or you tab to a login button and then you want to type your email address straight away, but you can't because uh, the focus is still on the login button. It didn't change to the modal that popped up. Um, and then not giving it back to the main content after they close the modal. So you type in your email address, you type in your password, you hit enter, and then you can see the focus ring still around the uh, now disappeared modal. Um, and you can't navigate around the website anymore. Um, being able to navigate to things that aren't on the screen or are supposed to be in the background, for example, when the modal comes up. Uh, the better example is uh, those hidden side nav menus or hamburger menus that you see very often. Um, they are, if they are not, um, if you don't want people to access them, then, sorry, that's a terrible example because you do want people to access them. And, and people who can't see the screen don't really care about how awesome your menu looks. But, um, for example, uh, using display none or visually hid hidden incorrectly. Uh, for example, when you're on the modal and you want to sign in, that's all you want your user to, to do. You don't want them to be able to keep tabbing and then get back to the probably grayed out screen behind the modal and then keep operating the website that way. Um, that's something that you don't want them to do, but uh, unfortunately, the um, that's a really common mistake that you see. Um, and it's also a good hack if you want to try and get around, for example, LinkedIn. <laughs> you don't have to sign in, you can just tab to the content. Um, so I think they fixed that now, unfortunately. Um, no, fortunately, fortunately, it's a good thing. Um, <laughs> and uh, not letting the user know when something has changed on the screen. So these days, a lot of uh, JavaScript is componentized, componentized UI, React, all those frameworks that help to make awesome little components that you can interchange in the screen really quickly and easily. Um, that means there's a lot of interactivity and a lot of things might be changing on the screen uh, dynamically. Um, this one's a little bit harder to implement, but you do need to let the user know uh, when that happens, and you'll be able to see how Twitter does that. They do it really, really well. 
Um, I wish I could show you the live demo of code, but I don't think I can do it in enough time, and I'm probably already over. How am I going? Am I fine? All right, sorry, the pizza's in the back. All right, the last <laughs> one. Um, color and size. Um, so, um, color is a way to improve a visual experience, but not everyone experiences color in the same way. Um, the number of people using mobile phones as their primary device as well means that simple content, high contrast, and big buttons are really, really important. So the next billion users joining us for the first time on the internet uh, will be statistically on cheap smartphones with spotty connection. Um, and they will also be the internet's most culturally, socially, physically diverse users to date. So um, Google is currently working on uh, building the internet for the next billion users, which will be primarily users from, I think, South America, India, um, China, and some other regions as well. That's a lot of users coming online to join us very soon. Um, and up to now, we've been building for primarily a pretty homogenous user group, uh, people like us. So, common mistakes. Your color theme and font sizes doesn't meet the minimum contrast ratio, so designers will tend to make a really nice and fancy and original uh, theme um, to try and set themselves apart, and uh, sometimes um, the colors and the contrast will miss the mark a little bit. So, an uh, easy way to kind of work out if your website is uh, meeting the good contrast ratios is to do the squint test. Kind of sit back, look at the screen, see if you can make out, squint a little bit and see if you can make out through the blur um, if it's large enough uh, to be accessible. Um, I've done the same thing for my slides, so hopefully, hopefully this is quite readable. Um, your buttons are not finger friendly. So Apple says minimum 44 by 44 pixels. Um, Makes sense, you're on a smartphone, your thumb's waving around, make sure the button's nice and big target to hit. Um, you're only using color for semantics. Uh, so for example, if you have a form, uh, you type um, an email address without an at symbol, you do validation, it comes up red saying, well, it doesn't say anything, maybe it just comes up with a red border. Um, people who are blue, green, colorblind, or red, green, colorblind, sorry, uh, can't tell the difference, can't see that it's red or, or indicating that. Um, something's wrong. So always add another visual indicator. The most common one is an exclamation mark. Um, and a bonus, justified paragraphs are harder to read uh, than left aligned ones. So uh, there's been studies shown on the most easiest thing, most easiest text to read, uh, especially for those who um, have dyslexia. Uh, sans serif fonts and left justified paragraphs. Left aligned paragraphs, sorry. Is that it? Uh, no, we are going to do a little bit of a screen reader demo if we have time. Yeah, all right, hopefully. So, let's see. So I want to show a demonstration of good accessibility. Uh, and since I can't see the screen, this is a good test. All right. So turning uh, voice over on. Voice on Twitter, web content. Is that too loud? Sorry, people at the back. <laughs> you are currently on web content. To okay. enter the web area, press control, option, so, shift, down that. So it does take a little bit of learning to learn how to use a screen reader, but it's not very difficult. It is a scary thing, uh, but it's not very dis difficult to use. So, um, generally, uh, screen reader users don't tab through everything on the page. There's a shortcut, uh, pressing command, option, U. Landmarks menu. Hello. Articles menu. Not coming up. F5, but no items and landmarks menu. Oh no, it's coming up on my screen here. Okay, sorry. No items and landmarks menu. Okay, hold on. Here it is. Okay, there. Alright. So now I bring up a menu. And this is the landmarks on the page. So if you see. Navigation. Navigation. Search. Search. Tweet complimentary. Tweets main. And see how it outlines the different parts of the page. This is actually done by... Um, Tweet search. Navigation. Navigation is using the nav um, HTML tag. Search. Search. I think there is also a search HTML tag. Tweet complimentary. And then these are some custom ones Tweet that Twitter has done. Um, another really cool thing about Twitter is... 
If I just go, let's Jeez, go navigate. navigation. Um, if you, you need a list. If you hit question mark, keyboard shortcuts. There's actually a bunch no, of keyboard to use shortcuts. Use the screen close button. Um, that you can use, which make tweeting really, really easy. Um, another thing I want to show you, and I want to make sure that everyone does the homework. Sorry, there is homework. Um, <laughs> is the shortcut for settings is GS, so I'm going to get out of that. F5 button. Voice over off. Oop. No, I didn't want to do that. All right, let's do that. Um, so escape. Uh, so if I press GS, cool. I am in the settings. Um, I'll click on accessibility. And I'm going to enable compose image descriptions <coughs> so that you can label your images uh, for people who can't see them. I think it's also a cheat to get more words on your word count. Um, <laughs> but you can do threads these days. So, cool. I actually haven't done that before now, truly. I feel really bad. <laughs> Um, alrighty, so uh, to finish up, um, I am going to try and tweet about tonight using a screen reader. Do it without looking at the screen. Voice over on Chrome. Choose slash fittings. Window. Choose slash fittings. Web content has keyboard focus. Close your eyes. Okay, that's fine. You are currently on web landmarks menu. Navigation. Search. Tweet complimentary. You are currently in a complimentary. Oh, sorry. Tweet complimentary. Compose new tweet. Larry. Tweet okay. one. Tweet text. Cool. New line. Tweet one. Tweet text. Add emoji. Add system references. Okay. Google Chrome Air. iTunes. Terminal. Visual Studio Finder. System preferences. Google Chrome. Air. 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 Window. Edit text. Insertion. Edit okay. text. I'm wrapping up my app. Risk just talk about. Embedded. Ling, number, very eleven Y, embed new thing, attribute to make a real difference. Watch my 2017, embedded, attribute with mom. There we go. I'm looks like, thumbs up, at Twitter, copy. <laughs> System preferences. Air, finder. Finder, desktop, Macintosh HD, volume. Skype, volume. Air, system, Google Chrome, iTunes. Google Chrome, Chrome, Twitter slash settings, window, tweet one, tweet text, edit text, paste, edit, compose new tweet, Larry, tweet one, tweet text, um, no items and landmarks menu, articles menu, links menu, headings menu, form controls, no items, form, form controls, controls menu. So form controls, uh, I want to search tweet for... Tweet one, add emoji, button, add photos or video, add a chief, button, poem, button, add location, button, add another tweet, button. Yeah, I'll just tweet, button. I'll add another tweet later. So I have a few links to tweet. You are currently in the voiceover menu. Tweet button. Press tweet button. Pretty far it doesn't tell you you've made a tweet. True that? Yes. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. It's a lot better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> There's always room to improve. That's good. Um, so an exercise I did when I gave a talk about React Native accessibility at Yale Connected last year was to get everyone to try their screen reader on their phone. So you have built-in accessibility testing tools on your phone. It's as easy to use as Tinder. You just swipe right. <laughs> Seriously. That's all you need to do to interact with anything on your phone. But I won't do that for now. Maybe I'll leave it up on the screen during pizza and people can give it a try. Yeah, sure. um, and there's stuff beyond the basics. Those I didn't mention were CAG or ARIA that much. Um, actually, you don't need it to get a minimum thing working. Um, and Thursday is actually Global Accessibility Awareness Day um, at ThoughtWorks. Come along um, if you're interested, and it's uh, a bunch of events around the world celebrating uh, awareness of accessibility on the internet. Cool. Um, and I've posted all this on Twitter right now. This link is already up, so uh, feel free to click through any of these to so see uh, these are all the tools that I use to test accessibility. And thank you.